Hey there, um, today we're going to create a presentation in InDesign um, that you can use as an on-screen presentation and then um, save as an Adobe PDF, uh, an interactive Adobe PDF um, that you can distribute to your stakeholders um, after the presentation. So we're going to press new and um, we are going to turn off facing pages and I'm going to set the number of pages to five because I want a title page and then four um, content pages. Um, we're going to leave it as letter because we want it to be able to print it out on eight and a half by 11. We're going to switch to landscape so that it'll display a little bit better on the screen. And we're going to leave the rest of the settings by default and press OK. So now if I go to layers, oh sorry, pages, you can see, I'm going to pull this out, that I have five pages. Now each of these pages has an A on them and that references the A master. Um, this is basically like a master tile that you can use to, uh, if you want to keep any background settings um, that you don't want uh, to change in every slide. You only have to create them once. Um, often we want our title page to be a little bit different than our interior pages. Um, so in that case what we're going to do is we're going to right click and choose duplicate master spread and it creates a B master. And so this one is the one we're going to use for our inside pages and I'm just going to drag it onto these pages to apply B to the inside pages while keeping A for the title page. Now I'm going to select the A master and I'm going to double click it to bring it into edit mode and as you can see down here this is updated to B master. I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I'm going to go to the corner of the page here all the way down to here and select a rectangle and then I'm going to go to the gradient tool and I'm going to go to Window, Color, Gradient, and I'm going to fill my area with a gradient. Now it filled it um, with a linear gradient, so I actually want to change it to radial. And then as you see here, this is a little bit too dark, so I'm going to double click this and then go into this editor and I'm going to um, switch to the I don't know, the lab, the L and the LAB. And then I'm just going to bring that dark color up to about, say, in the 90s there. And I'm also going to pull this in a little bit. Okay, a lot. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to change this color again. And the gradient, and I'm actually going to bring it, make it much lighter. So there, so we've got a subtle gradient in the background of the A slide. So if we look at A, double click A, switches it to page one. Double click B, and we don't have that background anymore. So in the first slide, I'm going to take the type tool and I'm going to lose control of my mouse, try that again. Grab the type tool and drag it to fill my content area. I'm going to center it. I'm going to pick a font of Roboto Slab. Those are free fonts that you can obtain from Google. I'm going to increase my font to 48 and tell strategy as my title. I'm going to choose the a selection tool and just center this roughly in the center of my first slide. So now you can see I go between slide two and slide one and we can see the difference there. Okay, so now we're going to come into here and I'm actually going to uh, go back to my uh, B master and I'm going to draw another rectangle because I do want there to be some color on this. And again, I'm going to go to Window, Color, Gradient. And I have this gradient already, but I'm going to switch it to Linear. And you can see um, it's going from top to bottom, but I actually want it to go from bottom to top. So I'm going to press this Reverse Gradient button. And, oh, interesting. Oh, okay. I'm going to change the angle to 90 and then reverse. There we go. So now the gradient is coming from the bottom to the top. I'm going to go back to my second page and I'm going to select my text tool. And in this one, I'm going to 
create a heading here first by choosing slightly smaller font, 48, and I'm going to call this one, oh, change the font to Ro Roboto again, and we'll go with slab, and we'll call this one goal. And I'm just going to open up a browser here and type in Lipsum. Go to Lipsum.com and go down here. I want to generate one paragraph of Lipsum. I'm going to highlight this text, copy, hold Alt and drag the box down to create a copy, but in this case I'm going to double click to access it and change the font down to about an 18. And we're going to place um, our text in here. I'm also going to change the font again. So I'm going to hit press shift and home to select it all. And instead of Roboto slab, we're going to go with Roboto medium. And I can see that my text is running over a little bit. So I'm going to drop it down and I'm going to go into text frame options and I'm going to nope type I'm going to go to paragraph and uncheck the hyphenate button so that I don't get hyphenations in my paragraph and we'll do here is we'll kind of create a guideline at a half an inch down the page just to line up my text width. And I'm going to create another guide right here to line up my title width. Now I'm going to go edit, select all, edit, copy, and I'm going to go to the next page by double clicking slide three, paste in place, Okay, that's not working. Let's go back to slide two, select all, edit, copy, edit, paste in place. There we go. And we'll get rid of this, which also appears to be on slide two. And go back to slide three. Okay, so now this is the next page. So I'm actually going to edit this title. I'm going to call it Objectives. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this up a little bit and I'm going to break up my copy into three points. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to press the bullets button. So now um, I have a placeholder for my objectives, but as you can see here, my return carriage returns create an additional bullet. So I'm going to backspace and then hold shift and return and do like a kind of a soft carriage return um, to create the spacing I want. Okay, so th this is our third page set. I'm going to shift select to copy them both and control C to copy. I'm going to double click and I'm going to right click and paste in place and this one I'm going to call strategies. And again, the point form for strategies works as well. And we're going to shift select again and co right click copy, go to the fifth page, right click and paste in place. And in this one, we're going to going to change the title to tactics. And again, we have um, the point form works well for the content for tactics as well. Okay, so we've got all this set. So now I'm going to go to Window and I'm going to go to Workspace and I'm going to change it to do, 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 Interactive for PDF. What that's going to do is give me a bunch more um, options in my options menu here just based on the default layout. And the one I'm looking for is Bookmark. So I'm going to open up Bookmarks and I'm going to open up Pages, and I'm going to go back to um, the title page. 
go to bookmarks and I'm going to create a bookmark and call it digital strategy. Now I'm going to go back to my pages and go back to my first page and then go back to bookmarks and create a new bookmark and we're going to call this one goal. And then I'm going to go back to my pages, go to the third page, go back to my bookmarks, create a new one, call it objectives, and repeat the process again for the next two pages. And the final page, bookmarks again, tactics. Okay, so now we've done that. So we've created bookmarks associated with each of these pages. So I'm going to go ahead and save my file. I'm going to go to my desktop and we're going to call this one uh, digital strategy. Oops, digital strategy presentation. And it's an InDesign 2015 document. I'm going to press save. I'm just going to take my pages back to my home page here and I'm going to go to file and then I'm going to choose export and it's going to ask me to save it as an Adobe PDF interactive which I'm going to do also to my desktop. I'm going to press save and on here we've got um, it's a bunch of uh, viewing options so um, if we go through them uh, the pages I want to see all the pages uh, I'm going to pick pages instead of spreads because I actually didn't have spreads enabled so it shouldn't but it shouldn't really matter view after exporting is just going to open an automatic embed page thumbnails I actually would like it to do that um, I want to view it the actual size and I'm actually going to say fit visible and my layout is a single page, that is correct. Uh, title to display is the uh, document title. It's giving me a, a message here, probably because I don't have one set. File, file info. You know, we'll go back and do that later. For now, we'll leave it as file name. Um, I want it to open up in full screen mode and I don't want it to automatically flip. The tree, uh, page transitions, um, if we want to make it a little fancy, we'll choose fade. Um, in forms and media, we can leave that edited. Um, I'm going to leave it as JPEG lossy with, for its four screens, so it's 72. We could actually bump it up to high and then say uh, 200 uh, because it will be for print. And I'm not going to leave any of the published online settings, but I'm going to press OK. It's going to generate me a PDF document. And when it opens, uh, it's going to just prompt me uh, to say that it's opening up in full screen mode. I'm going to close this nag here. Um, and I'm going to say uh, yes. So now it's opened up in full screen mode. And I can use my arrow keys or clicking on the screen to flip through the different pages of my report. I can press my back arrow key, my forward arrow key, and give my presentation. Obviously you can be a lot more creative with your slides, but just to give you an idea of how this will work. Now I'm going to press escape just to go back and I'm going to look at the PDF itself. and here in this tab here we've got our page thumbnails so it's created a thumbnail for each of those so if, if the um, uh, if they've opened up the uh, like we are in Adobe uh, Reader right now so um, if they open it up in Adobe Reader if you send it to them by email or put it on uh, your SharePoint site afterwards um, it may open it up in the editor like this um, and uh, it's created thumbnails of all the screens it's also um, created a uh, and a, like a table of contents here based on the on the bookmarks that we created earlier. Um, another thing that you can do, I believe, is that we can, maybe not, uh, no, we'll leave it at that. So um, 
So it's created a, a table of contents. So if they're going through, um, they're able to um, go quickly to the um, the page that they want to look at. And also this is completely printable because we formatted it on an 8.5 by 11 page. So um, that is a quick tutorial on how to um, create a PDF document that doubles as both a presentation tool and as a um, and as a uh, printable document and interactive PDF. Um, and that's all for today, and thank you very much.